Good afternoon or evening or morning, depending on wherever in the world you are. My TEA mini grant colleagues. Um, I am Elizabeth Harding. I'm a family physician uh, working in Buffalo, New York, just kind of like near Toronto. Um, and I work in a um, federally qualified healthcare center called Jericho Road Community Health. We take care of marginalized patients, um, including uh, displaced persons. We um, here in Buffalo and Erie County have a rather high, disproportionately high burden of tuberculosis disease. Um, so I want to express my gratitude first off to um, the TEA mini grant program for enabling us to launch uh, testing recruitment and community education initiative, which is something we've wanted to do for a long time here at Jericho Road. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, about what we set out to do, um, what have we implemented um, within the guidelines, the boundaries of the grant and what worked and what could have worked better, um, what we learned um, for this session. So um, to start off, we uh, the goal that we set, the primary goal of the intervention was to increase tuberculosis testing, um, education access and treatment access within the populations of highest risk here in Buffalo. Um, and we, uh, to that end, focused on one um, identified zip code with the highest prevalence of active tuberculosis cases. Um, that zip code is the 14207 Black Rock and Riverside neighborhood, which is sort of immediately north um, adjacent and north of the um, the neighborhood in which our clinic site is located, um, walking distance, bus ride distance. Um, the secondary goal of the study was to establish the true prevalence of TB um, in the 14207. To date, um, most of the prevalence data for TB that we have in the US is um, derived by an estimate of the latent cases, which is not a count generally, it's an estimate, and that is used to project um, a total number of active cases, um, an estimated number of active cases for that region. Um, the problem with that is we we don't broad population test anymore, and so we test highest risk populations, and we under test in um, presumptively lower risk populations, which leads to a very uneven map of risk. So we were hoping to use the data um, from this intervention to establish a true prevalence, which is kind of a lofty goal, but. It was worth shooting for. Um, the reason we, again, focused on the 14207 was that it has the highest known active and reactivated uh, case rate uh, in the region. So uh, we focused our recruitment efforts and um, patient education efforts uh, within that zip code. So the way we, um, we said about it was that the model anyway, projected was to sample 275 community members for TB screening and, and uh, group education, um, recruit for those patients within 14207 uh, zip code, uh, while extending and um, ultimately publishing community education resources for all community members. Um, uh, during the grant period. 
So we set about doing that um, initially advertising for um, and recruiting for particular test dates um, in the initial projected um, calendar that we were using. Um, we had six test dates and we were going to use three different testing sites, including the Jericho Road Primary Clinic site, which is in the next neighborhood over from the 14207. Um, a mosque and community center um, and a Karen speaking church uh, in the 14207 and also offered as testing sites. Um, and so we published and promoted within the 14207 using flyers and word of mouth. And that meant walking into churches, walking into um, uh, cultural association meetings, uh, walking into the mosque, uh, making an announcement, um, putting up flyers in local businesses in multiple languages. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then um, sending out using our uh, clinics uh, voicemail and text messaging reminder system. Some of you might have that from your own provider where you get a text message the day before an appointment reminding you of the time and place. So for the patients who were already registered as patients within Jericho Road, um, they're, they have access to this system. It's automated for them anyway. So we used that and extended it um, for um, language and culturally appropriate messaging regarding test dates. Um, just based on zip code uh, and language group. So that was the initial promotional strategy for the test dates. One of our testing sites became unavailable due to a disaster in the building early on in the study. So we weren't able to roll out test dates um, at that location. Another one, uh, we did have a planned test date at that location, but it was uh, due to whether the test date was canceled because of the roads. Uh, but so the test dates that were um, successful were all actually at our clinic site in the community room. Um, and what we learned. So um, in designing each intervention day, um, there was a team to do the patient education, including uh, laptops that were set up with uh, video recordings. We'd made um, sort of YouTube videos of patient education modules about tuberculosis. Um, and those were recorded in multiple languages and kind of set up for people to watch while they were waiting um, or deciding about getting their blood drawn. Um, there was a team a nursing staff team and myself who were there to do um, take a history, do some basic counseling, and then we're about um, what the test procedure was, um, how communicate results were going to be communicated and documented, and what the treatment and follow up options were for the patient after, um, and then um, the blood draw team, uh, which was also the nursing staff and myself. Um, so. We, what we found was that um, on test dates, the most effective means of communication was when you could look somebody in the eye, um, followed by uh, followed by the videos. They really liked the videos. Um, as an overall um, recruitment strategy, as it turned out, the videos, which were also um, published to social media sites linked to the neighborhood, so the Cultural Association um, websites, a couple of those, our clinic's website, um, a couple of the Instagram accounts and Facebook accounts associated with um, the practices, and it's the affiliate cultural partners here in Buffalo. Um, those social media postings had more recruitment value than public announcements and flyers. Um, as the study period uh, 
kind of rolled forward, um, a couple of observations were made in general about attendance to testing day events. The most obvious one um, in retrospect was that uh, people come out of their houses to get tested on days when the weather's good. And they do not like to come out to get tested on days when the weather is bad. Um, for context, the winters in Buffalo, um, again, are kind of like Toronto, like Canadian, Southern Canadian winters. Uh, they're harsh. And even a mild winter is pretty unpleasant. So our patients, we will frequently have noted increase in no-shows um, at scheduled regular care visits here um, in the winter months, some days when the weather is especially unpleasant, um, either very cold or precipitous. So that is um, that definitely that pattern carried through um, in the study. People did not come in uh, on the days that were bad. We had two test dates that were canceled due to weather, one because everything was shut down due to a storm and another one because the roads became unsafe shortly after we opened for the clinic day um, at this site, uh, um, which was also hosting a test event. So um, weather matters because the logistics of travel matter. Buffalo does not have a uh, an adequate public transportation system also. So most of our patients get around on foot. Um, so the best attended event was the one that took place in October when the weather was still nice. Um, the least attended event other than the ones that were closed due to weather um, took place in the depth of winter in February. So we, uh, we learned that lesson again. Um, in addition to that, and what I think was the most interesting was that even after the close of the study period, as more of our recorded uh, TB education models were posted on social media, we continued to recruit even after the study period had ended. People who came, called or came to the, the window at the clinic um, sites asking about testing, saying, I saw the video, I didn't know that, um, I didn't know there was TB here. I didn't know that I could take medicine if I have a positive test. Um, I want myself tested. I want my grandma tested. I want my kid tested um, and coming in to see their providers to get testing. So I feel like on the one hand, the actual scheduled test days were uh, kind of an overall disappointment, but we've had significant ongoing attendance recruitment um, to get tested based on the videos that were generated during the grant period. So we've been pleased with that. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that social media is more, more impactful than flyers, but um, I'm old. So I'm always kind of shocked at how effective it is to just mount a video on a social media site. Um, and the other insight um, has, and maybe a little bit more abstract, which is that, uh, how do I explain? Having, giving people the opportunity here in the clinic to be involved in the study who weren't in the initial um, design group, um, namely um, interpreters, a couple of the MAs or students, a um, couple of the folks who work the front desk who have a strong interest in public health and are, well integrated into the communities here in the neighborhood um, at, were so people were so excited to be asked to participate in making these outreach videos um, that they've stayed really engaged and um, continued to uh, work with patients and with providers around promotion. We currently have videos recorded in Karen, Burmese, Kareni, Swahili, Kenya, Rwanda, Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. We have one in Bangla, um, one in Urdu that has been recorded but not mounted, I think, yet, um, but will be. Um, one in Lingala is in progress as we speak. Somebody was working on it yesterday. So We've continued to turn out education modules um, and mount them so on social media. So I'm 
I'm excited about that. Um, I think that those were the most, most valuable uh, takeaways from this experience. Um, I'm always impressed by how public health works and the lesson I've learned over and over again, which is at the core of it, public health is taking the most pragmatic approach to using the resources available to you to reach the most people in the interest of the public good. And I feel like um, if you two can do a better job than I can, then I'm happy to hand the reins over to YouTube um, with considerable input from science um, and social policy. So I uh, I think that's it for me. I'm really grateful to all of you for listening and for your support during this grant period, um, especially to the funders. Thank you so much. And uh, if anybody wants to reach me or has any feedback, I would love it. Um, easiest way to get in touch is to email me at Elizabeth period Harding, Elizabeth dot Harding, all over case at JRCHC, that's Jericho Road Community Health dot org or at EH34 at Buffalo dot edu. Thank you.